let's dig into what you obviously have been around and know about the Packers organization for all these years and and what what rang most true or what what came what 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 did you take from this long read? Well, the two things that occurred to me right when I finished the story are Mike McCarthy's going to have a hard time getting a coaching job. I mean, first of all, if there are eight coaching I think there are eight coaching jobs open this year. And if one team interviewed him and the team who he worked with, who now is the management team in Cleveland, didn't interview him, that's telling to me. Very, very telling. And um, I think the other thing is, going forward, will Mike McCarthy become Brian Billick? Hmm. Will he become this guy who won a Super Bowl and everybody said, yeah, you know, good coach, but didn't get another shot? I mean, Brian Billick really wanted another shot to prove that the Ravens were wrong in parting ways with him, and he never got the shot. Now, will Mike McCarthy get the shot? And the other thing that rang true to me is that, remember, you know, and just recently we found out that Mike McCarthy, or that uh, Mark Murphy, you know, who runs the coaching search now post Mike McCarthy, that, that Mark Murphy basically didn't use Aaron Rodgers as as a sounding board, as, hey, what do you think, Aaron? What would you think if we hired uh, this guy who was the offensive coordinator at Tennessee, uh, Matt LaFleur? What would you think of this? Nothing. He never asked him for any input at all. Mm. And now, after reading Tyler's story, it becomes painfully clear why Mark Murphy would not ask Aaron Rodgers because, and again, look, you know, this is not my story. This is Tyler Dunn's story. But if Tyler Dunn's story is to be believed, and I buy it, you know, obviously Mark Murphy would mm. be skeptical in the opinions of Aaron Rodgers based on reading this story. Well, and then, so let's put a pin in that for a second here. So they bounce Mike McCarthy when they fall to 4-7-1, four, and one, four weeks to go. They can go on some sort of run here, finish 8-7-1. and one. Is that, I'm just going through Mark Murphy's decision-making here to tell McCarthy to go out. And, and but they leave. stunk at the time. They did. They but I, stunk. But I there's mean, no way. I, I mean, you don't think that there's no, 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 no seeing what no. you read in this article. No saying way. That we absolute. I, I would have done the same thing that Mark Murphy did. I, I read Mike McCarthy's comments that, the, you know, that it they was, did him dirty. Yeah, they did him all that stuff. This team over the last two and a half years is the most disappointing team in football, and no one is close for second place. <laughs> Rich, just think of this. This team in the last 45 games, all right, is 21, 23, and 1. The vast majority of those games Aaron Rodgers played. So it wasn't like Aaron Rodgers missed two-thirds of those. It wasn't like these are all Brett Hundley's losses. A lot of these losses are on Mike McCarthy and Aaron Rodgers. They are a sub-500 team over two and a half years with Aaron Rodgers playing. It's just, it's, I, I, hey, I, I, I empathize with McCarthy and I like Mike McCarthy, but they, he had no cause. He had no reason to think that uh, this is a bad decision to fire him with four games left. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern on Audience.